Hello there. Welcome to this video on short strangle. This video is actually based on one of my recent articles on my Substack. I'll drop a link to my Substack in the description of this video. So if you want to read what is being taught in this video, then you can also go there and read the article. Let me start by first covering what all we'll be looking at in this video. In this video, we are going to cover what is a short strangle. Then we will look at why you should execute a short strangle. Then we will look at what are the risks in executing short strangles. Then we will cover how does this strategy make money. Then we will see how to choose the stock on which you can execute the short strangle. Then we will look at how to choose the expiry for executing this strategy. Then we'll look at when you should execute this strategy. Next, we will see how to choose the strike prices for executing your short strangle. And in the article in my Substack, I have covered these extra topics. This is basically how to execute this strategy using Elliott Wave Theory, how to handle outsized moves in the market. If there is a major move in the market, how can you handle those? and when to book profit. So these three topics are not covered in this video. This is covered for our premium subscribers to my Substack. So you will find those details there. Now let's get started. So what is the short strangle option strategy? A short strangle strategy involves selling an OTM call option and selling an OTM put option. By OTM we mean out of the money. What is out of the money call? Uh, out of the money call is when the strike price of the call is higher than the current market price. So this call will be out of the money. And so we call it the OTM call. Similarly, OTM put is a put whose strike is below the current market price. So we refer to it as the OTM put option. So we will be selling an out of the money call and an out of the money put. And this strategy is known as short strangle. I have shown an example here for a short strangle in Dr. Reddy's. If say the current market price, that is, this is the market price on 11 Jan, which is uh, 4665. I wrote my Substack article on 11th of Jan, so I have picked the same details here. So if you short a 5000 call, then the 5000 call is out of the money. It is not making any money for you. That is why it is called out of the money. And the 4400 put is also out of the money. So if you short a 5000 call and if you short a 4400 put, then this is called a short strangle. Similarly, you can have other short strangles like the 5100 call and 4300 put. If you short these, then again, both of these are OTM options. So you, this, this will be another short strangle. Then there can be a short strangle where you sell the 4900 call and a 4500 put. This will be another short strangle. Because these are again out of the money options. So the strike price of a short strangle can be modified as long as the options are out of the money. Then you can call this strategy as a short strangle. Now why should you execute a short strangle? What is the motivation behind executing a short strangle? Now this is the payoff diagram. For this strategy, in this payoff diagram, you will see that this strategy is profitable within a certain range. So this is the 5000 strike. Here is the 4400 strike. So largely if the stock manages to stay in this range between 4400 and 5000, then at the time of expiry, you will be in profit. The actual range where this uh, strategy remains profitable is uh, slightly higher because what happens is when you short an option, you receive premium. So you will add those the premium received to your call strike. So if, for example, you received 40 rupees as premium, then your break even point in the strategy will be 40 added to your strike price of 5000 call. So 5000 plus 40 is 5040 that will be your break even point for the strategy on the upside and on the downside you will subtract this uh, 40 rupees of premium received from your strike price of the short put which is 4400 so around 4360 
will be your break even point for this short strangle so within this range you will find that this strategy will make money for you however if prices move drastically during this period so for example if the prices go to 5100 5200 then you will start losing money similarly on the downside when when you cross 4400 so for example if you go to 4300 4200 you start losing money so the motivation behind executing a short strangle is to benefit from a range bound move so if you think that the stock will remain range bound then you can execute a short strangle so that is the primary motivation for executing a short strangle so the next question we are going to try and answer is what are the risks associated with executing a short strangle now this here is the payoff diagram we saw in the last slide this is the payoff diagram on the expiry day this dashed line here represents the payoff on the day you execute this trade so you shot the 4400 put and you shot the 5000 call and on the day you executed this trade this will be your payoff diagram in the if you look at this payoff diagram you will realize that in case there is a sudden move in the stock so for example if the stock suddenly moves to 5000 then you will be seeing a loss on the same day this loss would be around between 10 to 15,000. Similarly, if there is a sudden move to the downside, so for example, if the stock falls to 4,400, 4,300, then you will again be facing an immediate loss. So the risk with executing short strangles is that there may be a sudden move in the market, maybe because there is a sudden unexpected development in the stock, or maybe because there is sudden buying pressure, or selling pressure you never know what happens in the market so there may be a sudden move and if that is the case then you will face a loss if the move does not reverse before your expiry day then this loss may also be kind of permanent in the sense that if on the expiry day the stock trades around 4400 uh, around 4300 or 4200 then you will have to book in a loss if the stock keeps moving unidirectionally so, so for example if the stock keeps falling or if the stock keeps rising then your loss in case of this strategy will keep increasing so theoretically you face the possibility of infinite loss if you take a short strangle so there are real risks associated with executing short strangles now let's look at how exactly does a short strangle become profitable this example i have taken from uh, november 18 expiry i had this trade uh, in uh, the, in the google stock in this case we had shot the 1200 call and also the 1000 put the price at the time of uh, initiating this trade was around 1100 so this blue line here represents the payoff immediately after initiating the trade and this red line here represents the payoff on the expiry day so what happens is when you initiate a short strangle you are counting on receiving or accumulating theta so your shorter call option and your shorter put option these options are otm options so they only have time value so they derive their value from time value only because they are not really making any money now each day that passes and if suppose there is no movement or no major movement in the day then what happens is this time value reduces and because this time value reduces so the value of the call or value of the put which you have shorted reduces and because you are short you are making money on these positions. So the idea is that if suppose the prices of the stock keeps uh, you know is range bound or if say on one day it moves down by 5% or on, on the next two or three days it recovers those 5% and comes to this around the same price then what happens is over that period the time value of the option will reduce so the prices of the option will fall through your position you will be able to accumulate that theta and so what happens is when there is not much movement in such a stock this blue line here slowly converges to the red line here by the time you reach expiry 
you would expect that if there is no movement in the stock then you will be able to accumulate this entire theta now the next question is how to choose a stock on which stocks should you execute short strangle so this is another important question that uh, would come to anyone's mind the first consideration that you should keep in mind is that you should expect the stock to be range bound so for example if you know that for the you know that there is a the stock has its results due in say next 3 weeks then you can expect that the market would probably probably wait for the results to come out before uh, posting any major move or if suppose the results have come out and there has been some volatility then you would expect the market to calm down a little after some time so again if you expect the stock to be range bound then a short strangle becomes a very good option for you ideally you should choose stock options which have high iv percentile because you expect some kind of a mean reversion with the volatility so if you don't know about iv percentile then there is a video that i have created on this topic what is iv percentile basically implied volatility what is implied volatility percentile how do you calculate it and how should you use it for your trading in options basically you should prefer stocks with high iv percentile to execute short strangles also you should avoid stocks which have low iv percentiles so say the iv percentile of the stock is below 60% then you should not initiate your short strangles in such stocks or in such stock options because you know the value of these options would already be low and when you are shorting an option you want to short uh, options which have high values in them so that you know you can benefit from a fall in the value of those options so for example if we have three stocks here and their percentiles are as shown here so for example dr reddy's has 75 iv percentile bajaj finance has 65 iv percentile and ashok leland has 55 iv percentile then you should prefer your first preference should be shorting dr reddy's strangle and the second preference should be shorting the bajaj finance strangle this is assuming that everything else also is in your favor now let's look at how you can choose the expiry month on which you should execute this short strangle now in case of dr reddy's if you are in january then the expiries available to you would be january february and march although in india stock options are not very liquid so if you check the liquidity you will see that the february options stock options and march stock options are not that liquid in case of index you will find liquidity so index options will be liquid but stock options are rarely liquid so that is one reason why you would be choosing uh, most option trades in stock options you will be choosing the nearest expiry however there is another reason you should be executing short strangles on the current month or on the near month and the reason is shown in the graph here this is the graph of theta decay you see uh, the time decay from 90 to 60 days and you compare it with the time decay from 60 to 30 days so you will see that this value is higher now compare these two values with the time decay in the last 30 days so the time decay in the last 30 days is very rapid so the time decay is very rapid uh, in the last 30 days so options value especially otm options which have only time value their value will fall very rapidly in the last 30 days so again this is another reason you should be uh, shorting uh, stock uh, options as strangles uh, which have only a limited days to expiry preferably less than 30 days next let's look at when to execute short strangles and again this graph will be your guide for this question like i covered in the previous slide itself on the last 30 days you will see that the time decay is the fastest and it accelerates in the last 3 weeks so when you are 3 to 4 weeks away from expiry and let's say if uh, the stock price is in middle of your expected range for the stock then it would be a good time to execute your trade if you are going to do a short strangle with a higher time to expiry then the decay will be slow and so if you have to profit from such a trade you will have to wait for a long time and if the longer you wait the higher the odds that there would be a swift or a major movement in the stock next question is how do you choose the strike price for your short strangles the first simple way to choosing your strike price is based on open interest so basically you will 
pick the strikes with the highest open interest so you will look at all the call options and you will choose a strike which is the highest open interest similarly you will do with the put option you will look at all the put options and choose the option with the highest open interest to execute your short strangle the reason you will do that is because uh, the highest call open interest will represent a resistance level and the highest put open interest will represent a support level and there is a video on how to use open interest that i have shared on my channel i will share a link to that video also if you want to get into this in a lot of detail but basically this is one simple way of choosing your strike price however when you do that so for example uh, in this case if uh, in case of dr reddy's if you see that the highest call oi is at uh, 5000 and the highest put oi is at 4400 so you execute this uh, 5000 call and 4400 put so you short these two options to create your strangles however if the current market price is less than one standard deviation away from these strike prices then what it would mean based on a normal bell curve uh, and assuming that your returns would follow a normal bell curve then what happens is that if your current market price is less than one standard deviation away from the strike then there would be a less than 68 percent chance that the price will remain in your chosen range what this means is that the odds of uh, you basically making money in this trade might be lower so you have to ensure that there is at least uh, you know one standard deviation a distance of current market price from your chosen strike prices uh, so one one might think that okay maybe you should choose uh, strike prices in such a way that the current market price is at least two standard deviation away from your chosen strike prices that way there is a 98 percent chance that the price remains in a range assuming that the returns follow a normal distribution but in this case what will happen is that the premium that you will receive from shorting these options would be too less for you to be uh, you know to be worth your time so basically that is why you can strike a balance by keeping a rule that uh, the current market price would be at least one standard deviation away from a strike so that you have a reasonable 70 percent kind of a chance that the price will remain in the range i will cover an example in the next slide and this would this point would become more clear there another way to choosing strike price is by using support and resistance levels basically the support level decide the strike price of your short put position and the resistance level will decide the strike price for your short call position so that would be idea that would be the idea there and you can combine this also with your standard division rule that is basically will try to ensure that the current market price is not less than one standard division away from either of your either of these strikes so that is another way how you can choose the strike price now let's look at our Dr. Reddy's example. Now this is a graph. This is the payoff diagram we saw in the previous slide. In this case, we have shorted the 5000 call and we have shorted the 4400 put. Now if you look at the standard deviation values from the current market price, you will see that the 4395 value here is basically one standard deviation away from your current market price. And similarly 4950 is one standard deviation away from your current market price so the strike prices which you have selected so for example call strike is 5000 that is more than one standard deviation away from your current market price and on the downside your strike price you have chosen is 4400 and that is very close to the close to being one deviation uh, one standard deviation away from your current market price so again this uh, kind of a trade then uh, has around 70 percent probability of being profitable for you assuming that the returns are following a normal distribution and uh, this diagram here shows what kind of profit you can make from such a trade so for example your maximum profit potential would be around 5400 rupees these are your upper break even and lower break even points in a previous slide i covered for example in this case we would have received around 43.65 rupees as your premium for shorting the 5000 call and the 4400 put so your break even point on the upside is your call strike price plus the premium you received similarly the break even point on the downside is the strike price of the put that is 4400 minus the premium received which is around 43.65 so as long as by the time of expiry if the prices stay between these levels then you cannot lose money however if there is a major movement during this period and if uh, uh, these levels get breached then you would be staring at a loss 
this trade was initiated on 11th of January so let us see what happened to this trade if you waited for 10 days on this trade now this is what happened on the 11th of January the price was around 4665 for Dr. Reddy's on January 20th this price was 4597 so there was around a one and a half percent kind of a move in the stock in this period and this is your current return on this basically the value of the options you shorted crashed big time so you are making around 4000 rupees in just a period of 10 days in this trade so this is all about short strangles if you want some more premium content you can go to my substack and there you will find extra details on how to trade short strangles for example i will teach you there how to execute short strangles by using elliot wave theory i'll also tell you what you can do what are your options if there is a sudden swift movement against you there are certain things you can do i have covered this detail in my premium substack that also i'll be telling you when to book profits in such trades so these if you want these kind of information this kind of information then you can always go and subscribe to the premium version or on of my substack and you can read this there for your benefit with this we come to the end of this video i hope you liked it and if you did please remember to press the like button and also subscribe to my channel thank you for logging in